video, book reviews. I am Gabrielle from MrSpaddenNovelMore.com where you can find obviously a lot of my book reviews, videos, as well as book coupons, and every Friday a listing of all the books that the bloggers are giving away in the blog sphere. Tonight we are going to be talking about White Oleander by Janet Fitch, and if you can see my copy here, it's a little worn. I love this book. I read it, I don't know, maybe six, seven times. My lover has also read it six or seven times. It has been packed in the swim team bag and wet and frozen and I need a new copy. But I still love this book so I'm going to keep on it. I'm going to keep a hold of it. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Uh, White Oleander is about a mother and daughter. The mother murders her boyfriend by grinding down the oleander flower, which is poisonous, and rubbing it on his doorknob. Not a very pleasant way to go, I don't think, but she was a little love struck and he wasn't paying attention to her anymore. And the story follows her daughter Astrid uh, as she is taken into the foster care system while her mother is in jail. I don't have a whole lot of experience with the foster care system, but I think the book highlights the most horrifying parts. Uh, in her first home, she is, Astrid is shot by the mother after Astrid has uh, an affair with the dad. Her another home, she friends a prostitute, a high class prostitute at least, if you're going to have a prostitute's friend, it might as well be a high class one. Uh, another one, she's attacked by a dog, made to do basically all the chores. And another one, she's almost starved to death. Not very pleasant surroundings. But throughout it all, Astrid is of course finding herself and trying to find herself without her mother. There's a lot going on. And I really connecting with Astrid being one of the oldest, well, the oldest <laughs> of uh, seven and from a mother who's been married six times. It can kind of relate what it's like going through different families and how those change you and how you find yourself. And in the end, Astrid does find herself, but she still has to deal with her mom and the relationship that she doesn't want, but she feels compelled to have. I think that's something that's huge. Most of us have people who are negative in our lives and we know we should get rid of them, but sometimes we just can't and we're compelled to keep going through that relationship even when it hurts us. So it's a pretty universal element of relationships that we all have to deal with. So um, this book is interesting on that level. But one of the biggest things that struck me is this conversation towards the end where Astrid and her mom are talking about regret. And let me just read you a little bit. Do you ever regret what you've done? The expression in her eyes was bitter as nightshade. You asked me about regret? Well, let me tell you a few things about regret, my darling. There is no end to it. You cannot find the beginning of the chain that brought us from there to here. Should you regret the whole chain and the air in between? Or each link separately? as if you could uncouple them. Do you regret the beginning which ended so badly? Or just the ending itself? I've given more thought to this question than you, be you can begin to imagine. That is a huge thing. Regret. I always like to say I don't have regrets, but I don't know that that's true. I think everyone has regrets, even if you wouldn't change something, which I don't think I would change anything in my life. Uh, I'm the person I am because of those things, and if I took one thing away, who knows who I would be today. So I think that's the question that she's getting at. You can't just take one thing out. You know, we learn something from every single person we meet, every single book we read, everything we see on television, you know, even the most mundane things, you don't really know what would happen if those things hadn't been part of your life. I think it's a huge question that we face every day, even if we want to say we don't have regrets, we do. I can't really remember a lot of the 
this movie. <laughs> I don't know why I'm gonna touch on this, but you know, you always have such high hopes when you see a movie is being made out of one of your favorite, favorite, favorite books. And I can really only remember certain pieces of the movie, so I can't really say overall that I was impressed. I really think this is one of those books where if you, if you haven't seen the movie, or even if you have, you should just read the book anyway. If you haven't seen the movie, I would definitely suggest reading the book first. I, well, I suggest that for everything. Um, but either way, I think you'll enjoy it if you don't read the book, but you're here looking for a book review, so please read the book. I love this book. And someone sent me a new copy. Just kidding. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, Gabriella at NovelHorror.com tonight. And I hope you'll join me in bed again soon with a nice glass of wine and discuss another book. Have a great night. Bye.